thing about cooking with cabbage. You've got one shot to make your family cabbage eaters. You make something that's not so great, they're never gonna eat it again. If you're gonna spend the time making a cabbage recipe, it has to be amazing. When you go to the farmer's market, sometimes the cabbages look like this. The good thing about my cabbage torta recipe is that it uses a lot of cabbage. The first thing I'm gonna do though is caramelize onions. A little bit of olive oil. Okay, a lot of olive oil. When do I ever use just a little bit of olive oil? Never. So I'm gonna cook it down until it's really soft and silky. And what I'm looking for on the onion is I want them to get limp and a little bit golden. This is about half of this. So now I'm gonna let this cabbage cook down for a while. The point is to evaporate all of the moisture because if you have any moisture in the cabbage, it's gonna make the pastry soggy. This needs both more salt and a little bit of cider vinegar just to kind of perk it up. See, this is so good right now as it is. I would serve this to my family as a side dish. So do you see those little brown onions and some brown pieces of cabbage? That is gonna add such good flavor to the torta. So what makes this a torta is that I'm putting all that lovely cabbage into a pastry crust. And I've made a very sturdy dough here. This has some whole wheat flour in it. It gives it some flavor and also gives it really solid texture. And you wanna make the dough ahead by at least an hour so that it can rest in the fridge. Now the trick to rolling out any kind of dough is to keep it moving. Squishy squish. Come on, dough. So this is approximately 12 by 17, but more important, it's only a quarter inch thick, which is really what you want. You're looking for the thinness of the pastry and you wanna have enough room to put all the toppings on it. So now I'm gonna layer my cabbage with some breadcrumbs that I flavored with garlic and thyme. I just toasted them in the same pan that I used to cook my cabbage down. And then when you toast them, it makes them extra crunchy. And then it also lets the flavors of the garlic and the thyme get all mixed in there. So I'm gonna add half of my breadcrumbs first as the first layer. Another nice thing about the breadcrumbs is that they help absorb any excess moisture that's still on the cabbage, which makes it a really nice solid filling. You could just pick up a piece with your hand and take it on a picnic. I'm gonna add a little bit of cheese now because it's gonna be creamy and delicious. So I've got fontina here. You could also use Emmentaler, you could use good old Swiss cheese, but the fontina is really creamy. And now I'm just gonna do that layering all over again. The reason that you wanna do two layers of everything is because it's not gonna mix up well. And if you just tried to toss it all in the bowl together, that's not gonna work well either because stuff's gonna clump up. Now I'm just gonna fold the dough over. Using a little bit of water here on the border is gonna help seal the pastry dough. Sort of empanada style. And then you wanna cut some air holes right in the center. I'm gonna give you a little sun so you can think about warm places while you eat your cabbage. Now I'm just gonna put some egg right on top of the dough and that just makes it golden and even more beautiful. So it may have seemed like a tall order to get cabbage to be so gorgeous that your family can't wait to eat it, but there won't be a crumb left.